Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for Elden Ring. This time I'm going to show you how to defeat the God Devouring Serpent and Rykard Lord of Blasphemy. As soon as you enter the arena, you'll pick up a weapon. This is the Serpent Hunter. You want to equip this weapon regardless of what your stats are. This weapon has zero stat requirements. Strength, Intelligence, Arcane, Dexterity, Faith, all zero. You can use this no matter what your build is, and you're supposed to use it in this fight. If you're a fan of From Software games, this is the Storm Ruler of Elden Ring. But this fight is way crazier than any Storm Ruler fight in history. So, you'll notice that the unique skill is a great serpent hunt, perform a powerful forward lunge, and follow up with an upward thrust via an additional input. So, if you've never really messed with uh, the Ashes of War in this game, it's pretty simple. What you want to do is you want to two-hand the weapon, press L2, and then press L2 again after the first hit, and you will do a massive amount of damage. The boss will be stunned after you do that. However, you cannot just spam this move and keep the boss stun locked. You do have to weave in normal attacks with the weapon with just your regular R1 attack, and it will deal decent damage, but it deals the most damage when you hit the boss a second time. So the first hit was 747, and by the time we got to the second hit, it was over 2,000. So the most damage gets done on the second hit. So here in phase one, the boss has a few attacks. It can slam its head at you either twice or three times. Very rarely will it do it once, but the tell for the third one is you want to look through the rubble and wait for the boss to open its mouth. Once the boss opens its mouth, that's when you dodge. All the while, you want to be weaving in R1 attacks, and if you get the boss stunned like this, you want to keep hitting R1 on the way down, and then once it's fully down and you have a little bit of stamina regenerated, that's when you do the special L2 attack. So, you should be able to do this, uh, you know, after a while, you should be able to get him down with only two L2 attacks, and then the boss should go down. Somehow, I am just surviving on one HP here. I think I got so frustrated with this boss by the time I got this far, I was like, you know what? Let's see if I can even make it to phase two. So that move right there, where the boss is just sort of wigging out and lava's flying all over the place, for that, you really just want to back up and let him do his thing. But the boss has another move where he will uh, throw fire at you. That one, you can just roll through the fire, and you'll literally roll right into the boss, and you can get a quick two R1s. Starting off phase two, you just want to run a little far into the boss, not too far, and then immediately start your L2. The reason you don't want to go too far is because the lava surrounding the boss, if that reaches you, it will interrupt your cast of that second L2 and basically negate all the damage you would have done, which was basically completely backloaded on that second L2 hit. So this overhead slam here, this is a little tricky. What you want to do is when it's coming back at you, you want to wait for the boss to slam the sword down. It will always land next to you, and then you want to roll. It's a delayed hit. The boss will always follow that up with a forward stab and then rip that out of the ground. So you just want to be careful for that. And then we can luckily get another full L2 attack here. But on my next L2, you're going to notice that I get interrupted by lava. Very rarely in phase two will the serpent become active again it's a little difficult to tell when it's going to happen because the head literally just flips around within a few frames and then it's coming after you. So unless you're at a decent distance, it's hard to tell when it's happening. You'll notice that while the boss is doing all of this, the boss is getting closer to me and so is the lava. That's really tough to judge. And when the sky turns red, that means that skulls are going to soon start raining down from the sky. If you see lava on the floor and not surrounding the boss, it's going to become a geyser. Right here. Tons of damage to me. No bueno. And these things just sort of happen in phase two. Once the boss puts his sword up, the skulls are going to come down. I recommend just turning around and trying really hard to get your own bearings. Because this arena is very big, because of all these pillars, it's very easy to get stuck on the environment. I cannot tell you how many times it happened to me where I was getting stuck on the environment. The boss was pixels in front of me and I couldn't do anything about it. With these skulls, they don't deal damage to you because they never actually touch you. They're like proximity mines. So when they get right next to you, they will explode and the explosion is what deals the damage. So don't feel like you need to roll away right away after you know they reach you. 
wait an extra second. And you can also just run around the room, avoiding them if you have enough stamina. Phase two gets extremely chaotic. Like I said, this took me a really long time to do, about an hour and a half. And for a Storm Ruler boss, that is a long time. I really hope that they sort of balance this out a little bit, maybe in a future patch. Maybe just automatically get rid of those pillars in phase two, make it a completely open arena. I feel like that would help a whole lot, but I hope this strategy has been helpful to you and I hope you get them down quicker than I did. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Elden Ring, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when you guys go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and join my Discord. The links for those are in the description below. As always, I'll speak Johnny Cage. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.